<laughs> Throughout my life, I've been extremely fortunate to have the privilege of knowing people who are exceptional business people, artists, and philanthropists. Of all the people who are excellent in these areas, there's only one without peer because he's in a world class all of his own, and that's John. As an artist and performer, he has sold over 150 million record albums. Wow. Music that he has written and that he owns the copyright on from the start. I'm not sure <laughs> there's any other artist in the world who can say that. And as a touring artist, he took control of every aspect of the business long before it was the norm of the industry. Unlike the majority of artists and performers who understandably are insular, John's always had an empathy for the world at large, and he's shown that impact as a philanthropist. He has used his platform as a global rock star and paired it with his own money and operating skill and created the Soul Foundation as you saw earlier, building a model program for solving the vicious cycle of hunger, poverty, and homelessness that has now been copied by many others. And I'm very proud of him because as the son of two Marines, he has a deep respect and affection for the brave women and men who serve our country. He has written multiple songs and tributes and dedicated the proceeds to veterans in need. But above all else, and unlike most people who have excelled in their professional and philanthropic life, John is somebody at the age of 61 is still married to his high school sweetheart, Dorothea. <laughs> I can personally tell you he's madly in, and dedicated, madly in love and dedicated to her and his kids, Stephanie, Jesse, Jake, and Romeo, and his parents. And just people with his background, I, I find that unusual that they still stand true to their family roots. So I must tell you, I'm so thankful that John came into my life, having first met him on the sidelines of a Super Bowl in 1997 in New Orleans. And unfortunately, we lost that game. <laughs> but my life became in infinitely richer for the relationship we have shared over the last three decades. His impact on me has been profound, and I know that there's no one else in my life where not only hundreds of millions of people, but like, likely a billion people can say that. John, I'm so proud of you. It's my honor and privilege to introduce the recipient of the 2024 Person of the Year Award John Bon Jovi. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you for your New England Patriots. 
And in this crazy world, I want to thank you for your leadership through your philanthropy, especially the foundation to combat anti-Semitism. Amen. I also want to give a shout out to my hero, my friend, my mentor, Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and Pam's mom passed two days ago. When I first got the news, he was already on the airplane on his way here. I certainly would have understood if he'd said that he couldn't make it. But he wanted to be here tonight for Music Cares, and he wanted to be here tonight for me, and I am forever grateful to you. And also, I have to give a shout out to a past recipient of this award, Sir Paul McCartney. I don't think it's fair to say that the reason most, if not all of us, are in this room tonight, it's because of you. So thank you very much for being Beatle Paul. <laughs> So thank you, Music Cares, for the honor of being named the Person of the Year. And although I appreciate your applause, there really is no me in team tonight. It should be we thanking you for this incredible honor. Because after all, there is no me without we. Everything that I've accomplished with or without the band or in my philanthropic life has had the support of my family, my friends, bandmates, collaborators, and an army of willing who have been ready to take my dreams and make them a reality. Every kid who ever learned to play an instrument or to sing is given one of the great gifts of God's heaven. And that gift is music. Music moves us. It moves us when we're happy and it comforts us when we're sad. It brings us together. And when we may not have much else in common, there is still that common thread. That is the song. Tony Bennett once said, there is no bad music, just different kinds of music. And every kind of music has its home. Recently, I had the opportunity to get back my first electric guitar. I sold it in 1979 to a kid from the neighborhood for $100. When he sold it back to me recently, he said, it's where it belonged, home. And when I took that guitar out of that cardboard case, it only had five strings on, and I still believe that the sweat marks were mine. I doubt that kid ever played it. The first thing I did was held it, cradled it, really, and then I wrote a song on it. So I'm so grateful to Cerebral Steve for taking care of my memories. Another thing I've come to know is that every time that I strum my guitar, I'm reminded that I have a best friend for life. That instrument will never let you down. It doesn't matter if you're eight or if you're 80, if you're playing in a bedroom or in the local stadium. Tonight and every night, I know how blessed I've been. There are millions of other musicians who set out on this same journey, but for whatever reason, their paths took them in different directions. Some of them may have played professionally, some as a hobby, and some may have needed help along the way. As musicians, we don't have safety nets. When the song's over, it's over. Now some find work, and some may need some basic assistance. And that is when Music Care comes to lend a hand. I love what they do, not just financially, but when service providing becomes available. That is proof that music saves lives. So thank you, Music Woo! Cares. Thank you for helping our people, our tribe, our brothers and our sisters. Thank you all for your financial support of our industry. And thank you all for your support of Music Cares. And I very much want to thank all of the incredible artists who performed here tonight. Your music humbles me and it's touched my heart. It's been your songs that have kept me company and kept me sane. So now, if you'll indulge me, the 18 year old in me wants to sing, along with any and everybody else. Let me invite the we in me, Tico, David, Hugh, John, Phil, Eric, any and everybody up here tonight. 
Here's a page from my never-ending songbook in my book of dreams. Thank you.